Rockstar Games are inarguably one of the greatest video game developers in the world, both in terms of game quality and production value, as well as critical and commercial success, having six games with over 10 million copies sold under their belts, and a couple of those being significantly over. In spite of all of this, somewhere along the line, they lost me. If you were to ask me why, all I could tell you is that I have no f***ing idea. And that is why we're here. In this series of videos, I'll be exploring the back catalogue of some of Rockstar's biggest games, reliving childhood experiences, analysing and reviewing our way through history. Will we discover that one big flaw, or will we prove myself a twat? Either way, we will be answering the question, why did Rockstar lose me? Today, we will be talking about On the 29th of October 2002, just one year after GTA 3 released, Vice City swooped onto the scene and took an already revolutionary game and made it better in every single way possible. I don't think it's overly controversial to say there isn't one element of Vice City that isn't leaps and bounds above what GTA 3 brought to the world. Characters, missions, driving and combat all take a leap forward to bring what might be my favourite Grand Theft Auto to date. I said in my GTA 3 video that I had never played the game before, so everything I was experiencing was for the first time. That is absolutely not the case with Vice City. Countless hours of bad parenting and homework time were spent murdering my way through this fictionalized Miami, holding very little regard for the outside world. Unless it was for food. I like food. In the early years with this game, I didn't have a memory card, forcing me to start from scratch any time I wanted to play resulting in one of the opening lines my head out of the gutter for one freaking second and fate shovels shit in my face to be permanently ingrained into my mind. The nostalgia-infested flashbacks that would wash over me as I played through this game made me very briefly forget that the world is essentially on fire and meal deals are four pounds. I will not let that slide. The main feeling of happiness and nostalgia comes from, of course, the star of the show, Vice City itself. A meteoric improvement over the drab Liberty City, Vice City stands out above pretty much any game location we've had before or since, making it all the more exciting that we will be visiting it again in GTA 6. Everywhere you look, the colours pop. From the sandy beaches and riverside mansions in the day, to the illuminated strips at night, you're never short of something vibrant to catch your eye. Whereas GTA 3 was limited by the boring, grid-based big city that is New York, the islands in Vice City vary greatly. The main island is almost like the capitalist district, with shopping centres and less-than-classy entertainment. The middle islands have your oity-toity golf courses, movie studios and the aforementioned riverside mansions. The final island is home to the docks, the airport, gang-run areas and the slums. These days it's hardly a standout feature to have such a diverse world, but as an evolution from its predecessor, it strongly succeeds. Many open world games these days will trade substance for map scale and diversity, leaving you with a sprawling world to explore, but quite literally nothing in it. Thankfully, here there is always something going on. It's usually civilians being murdered by the police, but arguably that counts as something. Gone are the days of playing as an anthropomorphized slice of bread. Now we bring in Tommy Vercetti. Don't get me wrong, he's no Nathan Drake, but he does have some level of personality. Firstly, he speaks, which is always a good start. He's somewhat rough around the edges, with every line of dialogue being either an insult or an I don't want to be here attitude, something I can relate to very deeply, but he does occasionally crack a good joke or say something nice to someone. Other than that, there isn't really much more I can say. You don't spend the game building up relationships with people. You do violently end some, though. You're just a typical gangster type, fighting your way to the top. You'll hear no complaints from me, though. It's just nice to have moved away from the silent protagonist. They have their place in gaming. Grand Theft Auto just isn't it. I'd also just like to give mention to the real estate cowboy man. I have no notes in particular to share with you. I just enjoyed him. No, I was thinking more of your demolition skills. Now this here, this is the development as planned, and this 
This is the property that we're looking at. Continuing on the trend of things Vice City does better than GTA 3, let's talk about what you're actually doing in the game. Even in the very opening, Vice City shows off a wide and interesting mission variety, like planting explosives around a construction site with a remote control helicopter or infiltrating a golf course to take some guy out. And this doesn't stop until almost the very, very end, letting itself down slightly with a preventable chunk of grind. But more on that later. Missions this time around are cleverly laid out to introduce you to various mechanics while also allowing you time to get used to the general systems like driving and combat, which have had some tweaks since GTA 3. Yet this doesn't stop them from being consistently entertaining. Similarly to before, you will be taking missions from various people you meet along the way, spread all across the map. In Vice City, however, they don't ruin the pacing by giving each arc its own build-up and conclusion, instead writing them all into one big plot that allows for a proper climax at the end of the game. Certain missions require you to obtain and wear different outfits to complete your task. The golf course mission I spoke of earlier requires you to wear a full golf getup. Later on, you are also tasked with kidnapping police officers and stealing their uniforms in order to enter a cornered off area. It's an incredibly simple feature, but it goes a long way towards giving each mission its own identity and having them be memorable in their own right. Whereas the point A, point B, pew pew, brum brum repeat of GTA 3 has them all blending into one. I remember the moment where I had to be the limo driver for a Scottish rock band and then suddenly being in the movie Speed. I remember stealing a gang car to infiltrate their factory and blow it up with C4. I remember all these unique missions, each of which having some level of purpose towards the greater arc. If you saw the GTA 3 video, you may remember when I spoke about my lack of love for timed missions. Well, they are back in Vice City. However, for starters, they are much less frequent, so points there, but they also give you more time especially in side content. So this time around, you would have to be upside down on a merry-go-round to actually fail one. You could argue that if that's the case, they may as well not be timed, which is fair, but also, shh, don't tell them. Another element that has been greatly expanded upon is the side content. Every time, why does this keep happening? We have some returning classics, such as delivering patients to the hospital in the ambulance missions, dropping off clients around the map as a taxi driver, putting out fires and murdering criminals. But we also have some new additions. You can now become a pizza delivery boy, throwing pizzas at people as you zoom past on your moped, or even answer a random payphone and become an assassin, as one would on a slow Tuesday. The variety of side content is always welcome in an open world game, and here it manages to all be fun to play. That, and deeply relaxing, I tended to drift off into a fugue state and suddenly I had safely delivered 78 patients. Fucking finally! There were some missions I entirely ignored, those being the rampages. I may very well have enjoyed them more this time around, but tough, I suppose. Vice City offers tangible encouragement to completing some of the side activities. Fully completing your shift as a paramedic will gain you infinite stamina, throwing in a hard day's work as a pizza boy will unlock you increased health, and so on. This could have been a feature in GTA 3 as well and I just never noticed, but I don't think it is. I just wanted to throw that out there so I don't sound like a complete tit. These perks are a good addition and a smart bit of game design. Not only does it tempt you into exploring more of what Vice City has to offer, but it also benefits the player when they do hop back into the main missions, equipped with more health and armor, being fireproof, or having the ability to outrun a supercar. Unfortunately, I have some gripes with the tail end of the game. I mentioned some grind earlier on, and that is all to do with the asset missions. In order to complete the story, you have to acquire several businesses around the map and complete missions in order to make them profitable. On paper, this isn't too bad. A few of these missions are quite enjoyable. Purchasing a movie studio and having to hire talent and promote your new porn was often entertaining, or hunting down a list of specific cars to bring back to your new dealership was some harmless fun. Some of the others were an utter pain in the arse. Having to drive around in an ice cream van, selling drugs to 50 customers, 
each requiring you to stop for a good 10 seconds with an ever-increasing police presence, making sure not to accidentally wind up in gang territory, majorly sucked. I ended up just driving up and down outside a pay and spray so I could clear my wanted level. I also ended up going mad. That isn't actually my biggest issue with this though. My issue is that you're never actually told you need to do this. I later found out that some of these businesses have been available for purchase for quite some time, but the game never mentions it, so I was left to purchase them all and do all of their missions in one go, which of course meant large amounts of grinding for cash, as I didn't even have enough for all of them. Not even close. After that though, we were left with just a couple of missions. The final mission is where I found Vice City to have a major difficulty spike. Hordes and hordes of enemies gunning me down very quickly. That was until I realized I'm a dick. This game has a crouch. You can take cover. And I didn't know that until my sixth attempt at the final mission. I am in disbelief. How did I get this far without knowing this? How did I play this game for so much of my childhood and not know this? Shame. 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 When it comes to the actual gameplay of Vice City, nothing has so much changed as been tweaked. Driving has more weight to it and you are less in the hands of a sentient and devious physics engine. You can throw some cars into corners at full speed without losing control. Others, not so much. How you drive is deeply dependent on what you're driving, and with that comes a much larger selection of vehicles than before. You have your average cars, your SUVs, supercars, as well as a selection of motorbikes and mopeds. Vice City also introduces flying vehicles, such as planes and helicopters, allowing you to see the city from a new perspective. Not only are you presented with a wider garage of options for vehicles, you can also move at much greater speeds. GTA 3 quite cleverly limited your speed by not having any proper long straights, never giving you the chance to gain any real momentum. This was obviously a step taken to allow for the map to load before you got there back in the day, but they clearly solved that issue for Vice City. Get yourself a supercar and down to the city strips and you can properly cane it. The AI will still try and kill you at every turn, however. Sudden swerves in front of you and pedestrians decided they've had enough and diving in front of your speeding truck. This whole experience is accompanied with a much better selection of music on the radio. Ramming cars and crushing civilians to such hits as radio kill the radio star. and If you find yourself in the unfortunate situation of driving in the rain at night, good luck seeing. Look at this shit. We've once again reached the end portion of the video, so I just have some quick fire points to make. The AI is still not smart, constantly getting stuck and needing to be retrieved. Combat isn't quite as tedious as it is in GTA 3 as you don't die quite as fast. And finally, some of the NPC dialogue you hear in the background is just excellent. I think I shit my pants. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Vice City is a prime example of how to make a sequel. The elements we loved from its predecessor are all there, but have been improved upon in every way. The map is stunning in both looks and layout, and the mission structure and variety make it still one of the greatest open world games nearly 22 years later. It is no wonder that so many developers went on to try and copy them. So much so that we have an entire genre we call GTA clones. Whether it's dismissive or not to call them that is a discussion for another series. Are you fucking kidding me?